Guys, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all and you know the truth. You're better than what your stats are saying. What's holding you back? Is it your teammates? Is it cheaters? Or is it the simple mistakes you guys are making day in and day out? The reason why I post gameplay from different levels of players is for you guys to see and analyze what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, and ask yourself, are you falling into the bad habits or good habits these players are playing in? When y'all correct things like sensitivity, trigger discipline, rotation, callouts, and teamwork, you will instantly, instantly evolve to a level you never thought you could reach. But in this video, we're gonna be focused on a lot of things, teamwork, callouts, and specifically confusing the enemy and making plays off of their mistakes. You guys enjoy the video, leave a like on it, subscribe today, and let's dive into the video. All right, first thing I wanna talk about is misdirection. Whenever you guys are in a 1v1 fight, you need to try to misdirect the enemy to the opposite side you actually wanna push. For example, here in the Gulag, I'm going against another player, and just disclaimer, I'm actually playing with no headset on right now. So I have no audio cues. I'm going purely off a of visual, but right here I see the enemy. So now I know where he's at. Now I know what he's holding. I'm relying on him to see me go to the right-hand side and him to try to counter that. So now that I come back around, I'm watching both angles. I know he was there, but because I moved to the right, I tried to misdirect him. I'm anticipating him to peek to the right, which is why I go over there. And of course I do see the laser also, which makes it a lot easier in the ghoulie. And then I just hold the angle. Now, despite the fact that I was in the open and he had some cover and concealment, this is the point where if you're this enemy, you need to bounce to the box to try to play your life. Because realistically, I'm actually in a worse position than he is, but because I had to drop on the enemy because I'm hitting my shots and because he stood still, it made my life a lot easier. So try to misdirect the enemy, play cover and concealment as much as possible. And if you're down bad, break away and regain. All right, but we're starting off with Deuce. Ragnar and um, him and his team are in low town right now, which is usually a hot area. He's rocking a kill, but his teammates aren't. So they didn't really get in too many fights. And we are focused up on looting, which is what we should be. We need to be focused on looting right now so that we can actually get our loadout. And once we get our loadout because of the zip's position, we can move on and chase the bounty down. What I want to see you guys start doing is get your loadout as fast as humanly possible and then go after some fights. The only way you guys are gonna get better with your combat is getting into combat, getting those reps in, getting the repetition. Unfortunately, right now, Deuce has um, stick drift. Guys, if you're having stick drift issues or disconnect, make sure you guys check out Aim Controllers today. They just came out with Hall Effects joysticks. I haven't used them yet, but they tell me they're badass bitches. Use code SAV to check out, links in the description below. All right, I wanted to pause right here because both the teammates did disconnect and we're gonna kind of move on because this is kind of has some importance in what they're gonna do. Right, at this point, we now have three of our teammates. All right, at this point, all right, at this point, we're now playing trio quads. One of our dudes is still disconnected, but free Lodi is coming in the next 30 seconds. We can go buy it and use that free one as a regain. That's always an option, but you can also buy a bunch of UAVs, self reses, whatever you guys want to really get the edge when you get in some fights. And that's kind of what I would do. I would just wait for the free Lodi and buy again some uavs i'm a uav whore i've been preaching it i live it i love it they're the best shit ever and then again we have the zip once we have our stuff let's go ahead out now green even though he did dc he's been back for about two minutes now and he needs to get his ass over here this little bit of delay this little bit of separation could cost him his life even though deuce may be a good player we are playing quads we are down a player and because of separation he's basically playing solo right now so if he gets stacked he's gonna be in a world of shit and trio quads is never ideal, but it's definitely doable. So don't give up hope if one of your teammates backs out, disconnects, whatever the case is. All right, and again, we talked about this in the other video. This is kind of the moment where people are like, I don't know what to do now. I have everything that I need. I have everything that I want. Correction, they don't have everything they want. They just left the buy with 22 grand. You guys need to spend your money. You need to spend it. Get some UAVs. Let's, let's figure out where the enemies are at. It'll make our fighting experience better. It'll make our rotating experience better. It'll make our overall gaming experience better. Utilize the tools this game has provided for you guys. We are level three bounty right now, and I think green's trying to get to high ground, which honestly, that's what I would try to do. Because we're level three, you want to get leverage on everything around you. You want to see what's going on around you. All right, so we have Deuce coming up in the air. He is pinging out enemies. There's a guy shooting straight at him. Now, look, this is a big mistake. Now, the glint was unexpected, but it was still a mistake before the glint even happened. So when you're taking shots like this, you need to cut the shoot and fall to the ground. You pull your parachute the damn last second. You have a smoke grenade, so even if you land in the open, smoke yourself out, play some cover and concealment. The fact that we pulled it again right here was wild because even if the sniper wouldn't have hit us, there's a good chance this guy would, especially with guns like Evolver, MTZ, and the list goes on. But the glint did happen as well, which helped his teammate out. And even though we tried to dive, it was a little late. And again, great shot. Being able to hit somebody right as we're about to crest behind a building 
especially after ripping our cord again, is, is pretty nice. So good job on the enemy there getting that shot off. And because of the pings, I'm fully expecting Kamwai and his duo teammate to kind of be picking this fight accordingly, but we'll see what happens, man, because now it's a quad versus two. Calm spread out. I have no idea. Oh, yellow just died, but he's AFK. And pink. Whoa. Oh, your camera flashed with the red. What is this? We all have teammates like this, guys. You got you got to control them. Teammates like to split off when they have no business splitting off. You know who they are. Tag them in this video. You got to herd them like the sheep that they are. They get confused. They see the light, and then they realize, holy f this is the wrong kind of light they want to see. Get them back over here in the fight, man. But look, we're in a bad spot. We're being chased. We're being shot at. We're out of smokes. We're down bad. The only thing we can really do right now is make a play for the buy, assuming Ragnar does lose his ghoulie. But regardless, you want to play the buildings and play the cover and concealment. We're out in the open right now. I'd use this smoke to try to bounce to one side or the other, preferably the right-hand side, and play these buildings as we separate from the enemies. There's a good chance he can still kill us. But again, we want to break away to the buildings. Your, your job right now is to confuse the enemies. We talked about misdirection in the beginning. That's about confusion. You want to confuse the enemies by using movement, using the cover and concealment to your advantage. Remember, this could be a quad chasing one player and we decide to sit in this building and read Chow. He may get this kill, but this is a wild, wild ballsy move. He does get the kill and there's another player right there. Honestly, this team's oblivious. Regardless, I don't like the fight. Remember, even bots can get some nuts. You see what he's doing now, how he's playing the buildings? This is exactly what I want him to do in the beginning, but to break away. Now, I will give him credit. Watch how he's playing the building. This is smart. I don't like the fact that he went back in again. His ego's a little too big right now, thinking he can outplay this team. Remember, if they're stacked, you're probably going to die no matter how good you are. So at this point here, I'd, I'd make a break out the window again and separate from the enemy. I know pink is coming, but he's a little too late for this. And we're going to try to hold this and go down again because of TTK. If you get stacked, it's not that they're better than you. It's just that they caught you out or they made a better decision than you. And him jumping back in that building several times was a bad decision. Again, if he initially just broken away and played all these buildings, he would have been in a way better position to regain with the squad. Ragnar having some good shots, honestly. Again, not really sure what Pink's up to right now. We have a whole fight at hand that we need to be worried about, and, and that's kind of what I was leading to. We talked about separation. These guys are stacked. If you guys aren't stacked and you run into a team that is, it's time to stack up to fight them. It's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to be picking you off one by one. So right now, let's talk about observation. He did see this guy. So we have a guy right here. We have a guy that just jumped down. We have several teams around us. You have the mini-map ping that just popped up also. And even though your teammates... Is the loadout on the train? No shot. Look at that. What are the odds of that? The free loadout drops on the train. No way. And again, worry about this guy as well. He kind of has an angle on us a little bit. There he is. Good shots. Oh, I said good shots and he instantly missed, but it's still good shots. All right, we got a glint. Now, you saw the guy jump down back here. You see him right here. And again, even when you're shooting at an enemy, I was focused on the enemy too. You have to allow your peripheral to look for movement as well. Players try to always identify what a person is instead of noticing movement. People always laugh at me and other players whenever we're looking in the sky because a bird flew by us and it freaked us out. You want to try to have that reaction. You want to anything that moves, you want to react to it. You see him right there and how he jumps down. Even though I was focused on the glint with him, I still saw that and I really hope you guys did too. So right now we're taking a fight with a sniper. I'm not really a huge fan of this because if we get headshotted at this range with a XRK, a CAT AMR, we will go down. All right, now we're pushing in. Again, you need to remember this is quads. There are other players around. We've identified three now. You're jumping into the unknown. I don't know if I like this or not. Assuming it's a 1v1, this is a good push. The enemy's cracked. We can push him. However, by the time we get there with the plating speed, he's probably gonna be plated up and ready for you. So this is gonna be a ballsy freaking push and we get shot from behind. This is what I'm talking about. Start analyzing everything around you. If you see multiple teams fighting each other, do not jump in the open towards a 1v1. Player life, player position. And again, get with your teammate, get on the same page. Even if you're playing with randoms, if they're doing something different and they're split off, follow them. 
right? Teamwork is the dream work. And unfortunately, Ragnar goes down and we're left again in another regain situation. Even if we wouldn't get shot in the back, look, there's second Timmy right there, just waiting for him too. There's a third, look at that. So now we have Kamwai. One of our teammates that disconnected has finally been kicked from the game and we need to make a play. Ragnar has another Gulag token, Goat goes down and Kam is bailing out. Now look, this fight in general, I would bail from and just reassess the entire situation. There's a lot of teams here. We have no idea who's who. There could be three, four teams here. We don't know. There's a lot of shit happening. They're still shooting at each other. According to the mini map, you see the pings popping up. So again, break away. And we talked about this earlier. If we would have bought UAVs, we could have had a lot more information in that entire fight and probably benefited from it. All right, we have an enemy right here. We have several. This, again, look, you need to go by your cues, your audio cues, your visual cues. Now, look, you can't help the fact that these two guys just crested at the wrong time. It's a 4v1 right now. We're out in the open. But look, you got to play your freaking life, dude. So we see one player. Initially, I know he just came from the buy. This is quads. There's probably more people coming from that direction, too. Instantly hit the zip and do not play games with these guys. So, again, smoke out the zip and take it or don't, don't smoke it. Just instantly take that shit. Here's a tip for you guys on the zip line as well. Don't just walk up to the zip and hit it. You want to jump at the zip. And what that does for you is if you just walk up to it, you have to do the whole animation of grabbing it, waxing the pole, and then shooting up to space. If you jump at it, you just instantly go and you take it and there's no animation you have to wait for. So it keeps your ass pretty safe. But this is a wild fight in general, even as a 1v2, it's a crazy fight. And then here we have Ragnar again, going for that buy, which I don't like. His team just got 4v1. All right, we're, we're diving off. Good. Yeah, he needs he needs to dive off. When I look at these buys, I see a few things. One, there's a vehicle at this one. I already know there's going to be a team there. You've got this one right here, which is normally safe, believe it or not. Not many people go there, so that'd be a safe play. With the stronghold next to it, I wouldn't go there. Of course, the train's out. These guys are on the edge of gas, so it's going to be a little dangerous, and it's going to be a hard rotate for you guys. This one usually is pretty doable. It's not in a terrible spot. Again, we have smoke grenades, so we can just go there and get ourselves a safety by taking the zip and getting out, or we can go to this one. This one should be safe as well. Now, this one normally has people at it, and it's in a bad spot. You have several buildings that surround it. You have a little half wall by the buy station, so even if we smoke it out, getting in and out of that area is gonna be a bitch. You see the enemy running one way, and he's kind of low as well, and we're going back. Bro, you're a psychopath. Now remember, this is quads. Your teammate just died at that buy station. You shouldn't have gone back to that one. You have too many buy stations. And even though there's still 20 enemy teams up, that's just crazy. <coughs> All right, so here we have Rugex coming for a buy too. And of course, we have people here. We just talked about it. We have several people here. We do have a smoke grenade. Of course, anticipating people being here is no surprise, but I have a fear that there's gonna be other teams pushing up the longer it takes us to get the buy back. And we've seen them make kind of bad decisions when it comes to deciding what buy to go to or when to buy. We have $7,500, dude. I know that he's in his gulag and we might have to buy them back. So we might be waiting for the double buy. But again, I'm afraid of getting pushed from behind or the side or even this guy killing us. Just get to the buy station, buy your teammate back and then 2v1 this poor asshole. His teammates took the zip. We should be okay. But we've got it. We really need to get the hell out of here. We need to get this buy off. We're playing a lot of games. It's very, it's very rare I ever come to this buy and there's not teams here. Very rare. It's not a hard buy to fight at, but when you're down bad like this, you have ground loot, you're low on plates. It's, it's a risky bitch. Now look, our teammates are coming back in as well. I want them to land on us. I feel like they won't, but I want them to land on us. Even though they're floating above and they can give us line of sight and ping enemies that are around us, I want to get to the high ground so I can kind of look around too get to the rooftop, get to the second floor, and find out where these enemies are and help your teammates kill them. I don't know where blue and green's going, but I want them to come to us. We're down bad. We don't really have our loadie. Your boy has a loadie that he picked up off of somebody else, but we don't have our own shit, and they don't have nothing. So you're better off playing as a squad and helping each other out than going off solo and doing some bullshit. These guys don't seem that bad when it comes to aiming, fighting, accuracy, movement. They are better than most that we spectate. But you see the kill count? You know that these guys are capable of more, which is why I make these videos. You guys are all capable of more than what you're actually doing right now, just by changing these simple fundamentals, 
will help you guys evolve drastically as players. But again, it's quads. We talk about it. Get the execute. I don't even have my headset on, and I know someone's pushing us. Obviously, right? Here comes your boy jumping around the corner. Once you get a knock, especially when there's multiple teams, especially when you hear footsteps, jump out the window and reposition. We saw them do it earlier in the video that he did a good job playing the building. He just kept playing it too much and got caught out. Eventually, the enemies will learn. So you got to confuse them and change it up, confuse them more, change it up, confuse them more. If green and blue would land on us, this could be a 3v2. But they didn't. And we're dead. And he jumped out a little too late. That's what I wanted him to do originally. But it just happened a little too late. And now, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, here comes green and blue. Thanks, guys. And we have more vehicles pulling up. Now, they, this happened a lot later than I thought it would. I knew people would be pushing and third partying. Um, they just were able to survive this a little longer than I gave them credit for. We know there's another player. We just saw him on the mini-map. Good play from that dude, I guess. We need money. We don't have any. We got to get our teammates back. Although I say we have to get our teammates back. If they're going to be playing like this and not helping each other out, I guess there's really no necessity to get them. You're just delaying the inevitable anyway of you guys dying. It's funny. The amount of people that, that bitch about me bitching about people stacking won't even stack themselves. It's crazy. Stacking is the way to play. I hate to say it, but it's just what the meta's become, honestly, over the last few years. And when I say stack, I don't want you guys to stack and sit in the freaking building and play four corners. No, 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 no. I want you guys to push other teams, get in gunfights, get your callouts up too. We'll cover callouts in another video. I'll actually post my own gameplay so you guys can hear me and my teammates' callouts if you guys don't watch the streams. Our callouts are normally on point. But look, right here, we talked about it earlier with suburbs. People will be rotating in, especially now that we are on the edge and we've bought back our teammate 30 times so people know we're here. They're going to be ready for a fight and we're going to be outnumbered. And not once is he looking behind us. I know we need money and I'm okay with us looting, but at least scan around because you might be able to catch some enemies out in the open and take their shit. Killing enemies and taking their loot is the best way to get loot. Get weapons, get munitions, get plates, get money. The list goes on. We do have enough for our teammate now. And we're still looting. This is just not paying attention to the HUD, not really having comms. For a second there, I thought he'd go back. I'm not really sure what we're looking at. Again, none of this shit's important. None of it. Smoke out. I don't know why we sat in a corner and smoked inside. Smoke out towards the buy. Let's get our ass to our teammate. All this little time he's wasting, just look. I like the awareness. I fucking love the awareness. But again, dude, whenever you need a teammate back and you're in a bad spot, you gotta hurry up. It's an easy shot. This is danger shot. It's an easy shot. I love it, but I, I don't know if I'd go for this one right here because of our position once again. We have a whole city to our right-hand side. We have our city to the left-hand side. Obviously, with the Guardian, there's people there. Obviously, there's going to be people there. And again, we talked about it 100 times. I fully anticipate enemy coming from behind us. So sitting on a rooftop like this, vulnerable to take a shot at a guy like this, is pretty ballsy. <laughs> also... Weird, look at that, and there she goes. And look how close the gas is. When you guys are in a spot like this, pay attention, especially in game. When you guys are in a spot like this, you're on the edge of the zone, do not be picking fights way the hell out because you will have people closing on you. There's a lot of people, we talk about it all the time. I, we spectate bot lobbies on purpose. We spectate bad lobbies on purpose because I want you guys to see how players play. Are you supposed to play the edge of the gas? No. If you're going for kills, absolutely. But if you're playing passive, you do not play the edge of the gas, however, these guys continue to do it because even though they're playing the edge of the gas, they're not supposed to, they're going to catch people like this out. They're going to be coming up behind people who aren't paying attention to the zone, who aren't paying attention to the minimap, and they're going to f*** them up when they're focused on fights that aren't even near them. And uh, blue goes down, and I think we're moving on. I think this is going to be it for your boys. And they had ample amount of opportunity to regain. And again, I don't think they're bad players. I'm sitting here critiquing everything they're doing, but from what I've seen from them, movement-wise, awareness-wise, I mean, he's looking around. They're doing everything right. They're not missing a lot of shots. They're pretty accurate. They're good at tracking. They're decent at snaps. Um, it's just when it comes to teamwork and regain, if they were to fix that, they would not only drop three times the amount of kills they actually have, they'd probably win more games. This just leading up to the fact that you guys are better than the way you're playing. You just have to correct those basic fundamental mistakes that you're making and make your gameplay better. For me, for one, I'm honest with myself. I play overly aggressive 
because it's what I want to do. I push shit I probably shouldn't push just out of pure boredom. But identify your mistake just like I have and correct it. Correct your mistake. You will win more games. When I play a little bit more passive, we'll go on five, six, seven win streaks. Easy, easy. But if I'm out here trying to get kills and pushing bitches, yeah, I'm going to give up from time to time. More often than I like to admit. I'm not really sure why we're coming up here, why this was important. Now look, we have a portable buy. We know there's a team there. There's no doubt about it. Portable buy, edge of gas in the game. They're gonna be playing that as long as possible. We have two smoke grenades. You run a risk just smoking to the buy and getting your teammate back. One, we're the only, we have our weapons. So if we die for a res, our teammate's gonna come back with a pistol and we're dead. So now we're in a worse spot than we were before. Even if he's a team carry, you wanna kind of keep your weapons. So you need to play this fight correctly. You need to take the fight, but you need to play it. I love the patience and how he didn't shoot that. He wants to get a better position before he takes the fight. I like that. I respect it. My boy going to the high ground. All right, we have a nade. We could cook. And he didn't. So look, when he was cracked, he's running to the right-hand side. He's not just going to sit right here. He's probably going to play low to separate himself even more from where you were shooting him at. After I cracked him, I would have take, taken the nade and I would have thrown it right here. Right here. Just try to arc it my best over the rock would i hit who knows but it's definitely something i would have done okay i guess a little late but let's look what he placed the nade so the nade is literally going right where he shot the enemy at and then you probably are enemy threw out a drone so this can kind of hurt a push we also could have pushed them but again quads i don't know if i like the push i'd rather take the pick oh and again not bad shots i would like for him to hit a little bit more but i get it i mean it is what it is dude you can't be perfect that was, that was a better nade. And again, you saw the enemy play the right side. You kind of anticipate that. People aren't going to, for the most part, people shouldn't re-peek where they just got shot at. They'll usually peek the opposite side. There's a glint. So now we have a two-man fight going on. And look, this is the problem with not getting that knock initially. When you take a fight in a team-based mode with duos, trios, or quads, and there's multiple enemies, you run the risk of them being separated. And instead of getting a pick, now... They're able to collapse on each other and help each other out. And that's kind of what it looks like happened. So now we could, we could, if we wouldn't waste the smoke, we could have tried to smoke the buy, went for it, and let our teammate come on the loading. Again, it's a very risky thing, but I don't think your boy Rugex is going to be able to survive this. You have a whole team holding us. we got a bomb drone holding us. We need to separate ourselves. The only way to survival is to separate to the left-hand side. Because of the water plays, because of the coastline, I don't think anybody that's on this side of the map is gonna survive this. Most of the zones on the opposite side, if you're familiar with the opposite side at all, there's a nice little lip, there's a hill, there's a bridge. There's a lot of cover for the enemies to play that we don't have. Nice knock and we're pushing. Honestly, it was a great, great shots. I think we pushed a little too much. And again, allow the enemies to collapse on each other. Even though we, now we have two knocks, there's a third one. That was a hard fight. With, it was a 1v4, there was no way he's gonna survive that. Again, his only option would have been to break away, but again, I think all these guys, including the guy we were just spectating, they would not have made this rotation. There's no way in hell. This is, watch this team right now. Watch how this team suffers. Even though they've only got a total of five kills, they're gonna die. Watch what happens to this team. There's no way in hell they're gonna be able to push over without dying. And we talked about it earlier. Don't play the edge of the gas. When you guys play dumb games, you win dumb prizes. You need to early rotate this shit. Right now, we have an option. We could just go ahead and swim, or we could rotate to the north and swim across that way. This is where eyesight comes to play. You want to get eyes on the enemies and ask yourself, is there anybody here holding me? If the answer is yes, rotate left. Now, we've got shots coming from the coastline right now. We've got Rob. I don't know what, where Rob's going. Rob's better off landing at a building and playing the, playing the zone. This is crazy. But now that we're together, all these teammates need to be helping each other. They're pushing together, nice precision, getting the enemy out of here. We need to push together and hold this. Now we need, do need to worry about people on the bridge as well. So when I say hold this, I mean push the crap out this enemy and get the hell out of here. So Tay and Ragnar both have smokes. Ragnar has one smoke, Tay has two. That's three smokes. We could easily smoke the coastline, all get up, all plate up. We could easily smoke the wall 
get to cover, and we can smoke one more time to get to a building, or we can fight these guys that are holding us. With all the smokes, there's no reason for us to be playing in the water. But Ragnar feels a little bit of pressure, just keeps swimming like he's Dory. Dangerous with no comms is the only one out of the water just sprints. You have Rob sitting over here under the bridge for some reason. There's just no teamwork at all. Again, with the amount of smokes this team had, there's no reason why they couldn't have fought this team and actually had a chance. And there's the guy on the bridge. And that's really a hard anticipate. If you're playing on the bridge, you're kind of a psychopath because you're vulnerable from everybody. But you always have to anticipate for the worst. And again, Ragnar, every time he gets shot, just keeps swimming, bro. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen? There it is. There it is. So I'm going to break it down simple. If you have a team holding you and you have smoke grenades, smoke them and push them. I mean, dude, that's the only way you're going to survive. So what do you think is going to happen if you play passive? This. When you're in a bad spot, you're being held and there's a potential for a gatekeep or even a pinch, you need to smoke and take the fight. You have to. I don't care what your plates look like. I don't care what your guns look like. If you're in a bad spot and you know you're dead, smoke and push. You'll surprise the f*** out of yourself sometimes because you never know. The guys that kill us may be garbage. They may be worse than these guys. Don't always use guns that TikTokers and YouTubers tell you to use. Use guns that are best for you. I don't know anything about this build, but he has no business using it. None. If he would have had an automatic rifle in that position, the dude would have been dead. I'll be making a video here soon talking about different classes for different play styles because at the end of the day, guys, I've been saying this for years, you don't have to use what meta is. A lot of metas are built for movement speed, ADS speed, and things most of you guys don't need. If you're sitting in corners, there's no reason you need ADS speed or movement speed, period. And yeah, I don't think these guys were better than the last, and eh, maybe. NWA's got five kills. He he has he has the exact amount of kills of the entire team we just spectated. But he's bot, bot walking, and he's looting. It is a 4v2, and we're looting. You're breaking my heart. Guys in front of us. There we go. Now we're shooting. Maybe. Maybe. Bomb drone nailed it. Dude, if he's solo, oh, if, I was, if he solos this, I'm gonna lose it. When you guys are watching the mistakes these guys are making, ask yourselves, do you make them too? And then when you're playing consciously, try to not make those mistakes. It's hard to remember all the mistakes you're making, so just pick one. Work on that one, and once it's out of your habits, start working on the next. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe today, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.